Gut health and belly fat are so much more closely tied together than we thought. And I'm not talking about just general fat loss. I'm also roping in visceral fat, which is something that we definitely need to be paying attention to. Did you know there's only two strains of bacteria that are known to have an association with BMI, with our body mass index, only two strains. But there's 16 strains of bacteria that are correlated with our visceral fat. That is what is extremely interesting, is that we say all this stuff about the microbiome being associated with our weight, and we do know that there's indirect mechanisms which make that very, very true. It is correlated there. But there are direct associations between our microbiome, our gut health, because I'm not just talking about eating fiber for the microbiome, our gut health in general, and visceral fat. As a matter of fact, if you want to lose visceral fat, one of the optimal things that you can do is improve your gut health. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. After today's video, I put a 15% off discount link for Armra Colostrum. You've probably seen their ads floating around. These guys are everywhere. And they're everywhere because the stuff is selling and it works. And I've personally used it. It's been huge for my gut health. It's been huge for a lot of different things for me. It's helped me in a lot of different categories. Colostrum is interesting because most of the time it gets destroyed through the manufacturing process. But Armra uses a really interesting cold biopotent technology that actually preserves the bioactive components of colostrum. We're talking over 400 bioactive components. So stuff is like alive. I don't consider it a supplement. I sincerely consider it a food. It's kind of like saying that, okay, I eat fermented yogurt and that's a supplement. No, I consider that a food. The same way I consider Armra or colostrum a food. So all the stuff that you're seeing on colostrum recently, there's a lot of merit to it. And the literature is pretty strong on it. So that link down below, if you go to tryarmra.com slash Thomas and use code Thomas, that'll save you 15% off. So to have all this make sense, we need to connect two different studies. Uh, one was a study that was published in BMC and one was a study that was published in scientific reports. And then we're gonna sprinkle in some other stuff so it all makes sense. Uh, first, just to give you a matter of context, there was a pretty big study, randomized control trial, that essentially, just cutting to the chase, found that very similar diets, but one that had more polyphenols added into it, ended up reducing visceral fat two to three times as much. Same calories, essentially similar foods, but just more polyphenols into the case, right? So we had more berries, more green tea, these things. Now, that's fine and dandy. What does it have to do with the gut? Well, what we have to look at is we have to look at these other studies that find that polyphenols are usually higher in our bloodstream throughout our body when our gut health is better. What that means is that the better our gut health, the better we utilize and thereby circulate these polyphenols. And the higher our serum polyphenols, the direct correlation with lower visceral fat. So, in essence, to get the benefit of polyphenols to the maximum degree, we need to improve our gut health too. So it's kind of a which came first, the chicken or the egg, which we don't fully know. But again, based upon the literature that shows that we know 16 strains of bacteria are directly correlated with visceral fat, our microbiome, our gut health, it's definitely tied together there. So it's interesting because this BMC study that I referenced, it found that what is called hippuric acid, which is a polyphenol that's normally in like dark berries and green tea, this hippuric acid was elevated, and in those that the hippuric acid was elevated in, their visceral fat levels were significantly reduced. So hippuric acid, good to reduce visceral fat. Ta-da, all right. But now we look at a study published in Scientific Reports that found that hippuric acid is associated with more microbiome diversity. Where am I getting at with this? Could it be that this polyphenol is not having a direct effect on visceral fat? but this polyphenol is altering the gut microbiome so much that the microbiome is impacting the visceral fat. The hippuric acid is sort of a proxy for good gut health. When we see high levels of hippuric acid, does it mean that we consumed more of it? Or does it mean that, oh, that person has a healthy gut? It might be one of those things where we can see that in the literature now. High levels of urolithin A, high levels of hippuric acid or hippurate, 
That means this person has a diverse microbiome. It might have just allowed us to cut to the chase a little bit more. Or it may not have anything to do with the diversity of the microbiome, but it may have something to do with the metabolic health of the microbiome and its connection with our visceral fat. The funny thing is, is that a lot of polyphenols, when you test them in the serum, in the blood, it's because they are metabolized in the gut. Remember, polyphenols, they don't just enter our body and immediately have free radical scavenging abilities. They have to absorb, they have to go through a number of things. So let's talk about some things that you can do for your gut health that might improve your visceral fat or your belly fat. First and foremost, before we focus on the microbiome, you may want to focus on the actual epithelial cells themselves. You might want to focus on the enterocytes, the cells that are in our gut, because that is the structure of our gut. If you've got all the gold in your house and all the good stuff, but you've got holes and broken windows where the boogeyman's coming in all the time, I don't know, it seems to me you want to patch up your house before you start loading it up with jewels, right? That's kind of how I look at the gut. So things like bone broth, collagen, glutamine, now I know those are kind of supplement-like and might not be whole food type things, but definitely important. Another thing that you could add in, this is crazy, but if you get like Great Lakes brand collagen, that's like a regular collagen that you can get in a grocery store and make jello with it, make your own jello with real gelatin. Not the fake phony stuff that we kind of see nowadays. Real gelatin has a very solid impact on the gut mucosal layer. But you're also gonna find gelatin in bone broth. Right, so consuming a good amount of bone broth, repair the gut. Okay, that is, that is step one. Repair, and I hate to say seal the gut, but you do things that seal the gut. Now, hydration obviously plays a tremendous role here as well. If you're not hydrated, the gut can't really heal. One of the most profound things that you can do to heal the gut is something that you're going to flip and hate because it's a little bit hard and it's real, and you're gonna have to take a break from food. I'm not saying go out and fast, but I'm saying don't snack for a while. Take strategic breaks, eat breakfast, eat lunch, eat dinner, but stop snacking in between for a little bit. The gut needs a chance to repair. It is the restorative phase for it. So as much as that means that you need to put down the McFlurry for a minute, that's fine, you can consume it later, whatever. You need to stop and you need to let the gut heal. You're gonna be fine, your family will probably still love you. The other thing that you really wanna focus on doing, whenever you exert yourself, you need to add more protein into the mix because you have to remember that the protein is still what helps build up our gut lining, right? We still need that. So if you exert yourself, add protein in. You need those aminos, namely glutamine. If you're doing a lot more intense work, it may not hurt to add five grams of glutamine in. The literature with glutamine, besides from gut health, is flipping worthless. Like, I, I hate the stuff otherwise, but when it comes to gut health, it actually does work. So when you're beating your body up and your gut health is compromised, glutamine does work. You also might want to avoid things like trans fats. Screw that. You definitely want to avoid things like trans fats. What am I talking about? You don't want margarine. You don't want hydrogenated stuff. That stuff is not good for the gut. Increases lipopolysaccharide levels, increases gram-negative bacteria. It has a real effect. Just get it out of your diet. The other thing you may want to consider reducing or at least be cognizant of is polysorbate 20, polysorbate 60, polysorbate 80. These are emulsifiers. You can look up a list of emulsifiers that are banned in the European Union and pretty much you should avoid those. Because if they're banned in the EU, I just don't think that we should really be consuming much of them in the US. The EU has much stronger guidelines when it comes down to that stuff. And lastly, when it comes down to gut health, is dose your fermented food accordingly. Have a little bit of kimchi. Have a little bit of fermented dairy. I would avoid things that don't have much juice for the squeeze. Kombucha, not really worth it all that much. Sauerkraut, I love. I love that it tastes good and it's low calorie, but it's not the most probiotic food. It's just not. Most of the literature is strong on kimchi and on fermented dairy. So any kind of cheese that's a fermented cheese is gonna be good. That means like something like a Roquefort or maybe a blue cheese. When you start the fermentation process, it does become more bioactive and has benefits there. Obviously kefir, obviously yogurt, obviously cottage cheese. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.